Hello everybody, I'm Jane Williams. I'm a Waterbeach Parish Councillor and Vice Chair of Planning. Um, going through um, basically what we do as a parish council, I'd just like to explain that briefly. Um, it's a voluntary role being a parish councillor. Um, we don't just deal with planning matters, it's actually the basic running of the council, uh, might down to the grass cutting, managing the cemetery, and the library. There's so many very, very, um, just basic village functions that we actually are involved with. You can see if we can start my video. Okay, I'll try that. Mm. No, oh yeah. Oh, hi everybody. Yeah, so, thank, you, thank you. So, um, Water Beach Parish Council is very unusual now for the fact that we do have a strategic site that is approved in the um, local South Cam's adopted plan in 2018. So from going to being a quiet parochial rural village, uh, we are now faced with dealing with a strategic site, which we do know has been given approval. Um, with this site comes a lot of responsibility. Um, I feel as a councillor, um, because not only are, do we want to manage the pressures on, on the services, so to speak, in the um, existing village, but also it's making sure that the new town comes forward and that the facilities are there um, for the people that will, will, will come after us really. Um, when the new town gets plenty of um, enough residents, then they will have their own town council, but at the moment they are, it sits within the parish. So you can imagine, um, we've had literally thousands of pages of planning um, material to look at. Planning, um, I mean, my job stopped two years ago, quite frankly, it has become a full-time job managing some of the planning stuff. And it is a voluntary role as a parish councillor. Um, so with that, it's actually increased the um, pressure on our, on our parish staff. So responding to, um, to the consultations, um, we spend hours not just speaking about the Newtown consultations, but consultations that will actually affect, um, like, like the Greater Cambridge Partnership, uh, like the Greater Cambridge and um, the Combined Authority, which are all dealing with providing facilities, transport, etc. Um, and the population of the Newtown will, a rough estimate will be around five times the size of the um, existing Water Beach population. So there is a lot um, to be going on. Um, we would, the, the money that actually goes out in extra staffing at the moment comes from the precept. Um, we haven't been able to be involved with um, section 106 that's been discussed earlier um, because um, there, there is no extra funding to help the extra work in, in, in the village. Um, the developers over in Civic and RLW have provided us with a, um, a planning consultant, but then um, it's sort of as and when and it's to do with the new town. So we really could do with some support, either whether it's um, physically or on a monetary basis from the developers or and, and with South Cams, just to help us bring this forward properly. Um, Robin, do you want to move that on to the next one, please? Okay, so as I said before, we've had lots of planning applications through um, and what is in a planning uh, application should actually transfer onto the ground. Um, and one of the things that we ask all the time is, how is it being managed and monitored? Because we can't actually physically get onto the site to see what's happening. So, you know, um, are things coming forward? This is a general question. Are things coming forward in accordance with the decision notice that was issued that Mike referred to earlier, that gave, um, gave consent for this? So I think um, this isn't trying to guess at anybody, but this is just actually saying, I mean, Kate Grant and myself went to speak at a parish council meeting, uh, a district council meeting regarding the innovation park, because there's going to be development there um, near the urban and civic site. Now, if I could, if you could just bear with me, because it's so hard to get this across in a few minutes. So, Kate and I went and spoke at the meeting, and it was it was it came up that the fact that we would like 
with the innovation part, which is at Sterling House, if anybody, if, if anybody listening doesn't know, um, to the right of Bannard Road, the big, to, uh, um, Denny End Road, the big building to the right. Um, and now it was discussed that we would like a footway um, and some lighting because there's a gym up that way um, and, and the access to the urban and civic site. Um, and we asked if we could have these facilities. And this is taken from the South Cam's minutes. And it says that the South Cam's planning committee, the matter of a shared pedestrian and cycle path was discussed as WPC representatives requested there would be a footway linking the village to the innovation park. Mm -hmm. It was stated that it was not necessary under planning application, I won't read that out, um, as this was part of urban and civics obligations to provide um, this facility. Now, we've never had any feedback we don't know if that's going to happen. So this is basically actually going back to how is South Cairns, how, how is the new development actually being monitored and managed that's in the planning application transfers to the land. Um, so that's a for instance there. Um, we've heard that there's S106 monies, but also a lot of the agreements are done by condition, um, which it, it is done on budget, I would say. And please do. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, whereas S106 is actually more of a legally binding agreement. So um, again, it's just making sure, because of the impact of a huge settlement, the fact that it's not going to be too much of a burden and that what goes forward is actually provided for within the surrounding villages, not just Water Beach. Um, can you just move on then, please, Robin? So from there, Managing and monitoring. Um, now, I am a bit of a monkey for going through and looking at agreements and things, and people who know me will know that. Now, I've been going through the S106 agreements, and I've noticed that there should be uh, monitoring groups, there should be a transport group. Um, and at the moment, um, I, I'd like to ask a question, really. Have these groups been set up? Is the... Um, development as it's starting to come forward now being monitored and managed um, here in the transport one it says that there's a meeting of stakeholders and it lists a lot of people that should be attending these meetings now within these groups um, so um, adjacent landowner local bus operators network rail parish councils now I would like to suggest and if there's any councillors here for water which on, on the call at the moment, I, I personally, we are personally are not actually aware of these groups or parties to it. And so again, it's how is this coming forward? How are the people that are coming and the people that are in the village already going to be protected? So but I just 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 one moment. I just wanted to ask you to come to a close. So if you want to put your yeah, question do, yeah, yeah. and then I'll yeah, direct okay. your questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you're absolutely fine. Thank you, Anna. So that comes down into the enforcement part. Um, is it being monitored, managed and how? Um, I do believe, I would like to say this, for the A10 upgrade, um, there was supposed to be traffic monitoring when commencement of the um, settlement which started in 2020. So we've lost two years monitoring figures. And it's really important if we've got, going on to sustainability, we've got the um, Greater Cambridge Trans um, Partnership, we've got the Combined Authority, um, and we've got stations, we've got all sorts of things going on. I think we need to know what is being said, what is being monitored, and what best sustainable transport system and village is going to come forwards. Okay, um, okay. so I will leave it there. Thanks very much, Jane. That's great. Uh, you've asked lots of questions. So I just want to direct that question. Um, uh, Robin, could you see, uh, stop sharing the screen so that we can, thank you. Um, so what we wanted to direct to Mike Huntington was um, Jane's question about how monitoring and management is done and who is on bodies which look at that. Sorry, that's not a very good paraphrase of what Jane asked, but it, you, you understood what you heard what she asked. Thank you, Anna. Uh, yes, well, well, I can answer that question quite clearly. It's, it's, it's my full-time job to monitor and manage 
to the development of the new town. Um, I have weekly project meetings with the developer, and as, as far as the the project delivery group is concerned, we have had meetings about on. Oh, actually, sorry, it's not my video. I was going to say, can we see your video? Yeah, see my face. <laughs> sorry, is that my, see my see my face. I've moved. I've moved into the main part of the office. Um, yes, and and obviously as 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 the development progresses, um, at the at the moment, what we've got is. Um, Lots of infrastructure has been built, but we haven't got any residents there yet. So we've, so we've not got any anyone to use the buses yet or anyone to use the schools yet or anything like that. But as the development progresses and it gets busier and busier because it's just going to get busier and busier, then the monitoring of the trigger points, for example, that I mentioned in my earlier discussion, they become critical because, as I said earlier, trigger points for occupations is about the delivery of, all, of, of lots of the infrastructure. Um, Yes, and obviously Jane, as Jane knows, I speak to um, to Tim as well, your your planning advisor, regularly about issues. Okay, thank you, um, Jane. Did you want to come back on just one point? Yes, please. Um, I, am I still on mute? No, I can no, you're, hear you. You're there. Okay. Um, yeah, um, as I say, I've been looking through the S one and six, and some of this, some of the groups look like they should be there at commencement. And as I say, I would come back to the, um, the, the A10 monitoring. Um, and again, this is, uh, we cannot access the site. Um, Tim Slater says he hasn't been on there since 2019. And I will say, uh, um, I will speak for myself as a parish councillor, but I think perhaps my fellow councillors might say, um, it is a voluntary role and we have been elected to do the best that we can. So any knowledge and any sharing, um, any explaining, um, what is happening um, then can only be to everybody's advantage. I mean, yeah. can I just use it for instance, like the dewatering of North Stone? There are huge issues. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know. You know tracks. Can I just sort? Yeah. Okay. Can I just sort of say though, there were issues raised by um, community right at the beginning of this, and we need the reassurances. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to. Um, move on now into, thank you very much indeed um, to both Brian and Jane.